when you go out to buy a t-shirt for yourself you will not buy something which is very fit to your body because then if you eat pizza or paratha and biryani and if you become fat it will not be convenient you will also not buy something that is very loose because then it looks like a cloth hanging on a skeleton you will try to buy a right fit for your body the problem of overfitting and underfitting happens in the machine learning world as well and there are techniques to tackle this overfitting and underfitting problem and these techniques are called regularization techniques when you have a training data you try to train your model too much it might overfit and when you get the actual test data for doing prediction it will not probably perform well dropout regularization is one of the techniques that's used to tackle overfitting problem in deep learning uh, field and that's what we are going to look into uh, this video today as usual we'll go over some theory first and then we'll write a uh, python code using tensorflow uh, and we'll see how adding a dropout layer increases the performance of your neural network so let's begin i did a google image search on overfitting versus underfitting and i'm finding some useful images so let's look at this particular image so what's happening here is when you have a data set let's say a classification problem and these are like you know like uh, uh, circles and check mark these are like two different classes and when you try to underfit what will happen is you're generalizing too well in that case your performance on test data set will be hampered uh, this is all training data set but in the training data set itself you're saying it's you're seeing it's drawing a linear line when you're trying to overfit you know it just tries to squeeze the boundaries somehow so that it can perform best on the training data set but when it comes to test data set again this model will not perform well what is appropriate is this middle image where you have a good generalization of your equation and that is the best thing uh, you can do with any machine learning model try to find a right balance between underfitting and overfit just find the right fit just like your t-shirt size here is the example of a deep neural network actually it is not very deep it has only two hidden layers in reality you will have many hidden layers and each of these hidden layers will have many many neurons now when you have this kind of complex structure the neural network will try to overfit your data set let's say if your data set is big and if you run too many epochs this neural network will try to overfit your data set and it will not perform well on test data set because now it cannot generalize well one of the things you can do is just randomly drop some neurons so from the first layer i drop these two which are marked in red from the second hidden layer i also drop the two neurons and i am dropping them at random doesn't matter which neuron you drop also i am dropping at the rate of 50 percent because you see i drop two out of four or uh, there is this factor which you can specify when you're creating dropout layer and you can say 0.5 means 50 percent if you say 0.2 which means if you have 10 neurons you'll be only dropping two and you feed your first training sample in your feed forward pass you calculate the error and when it comes to second sample you again randomly choose some different set of neurons to drop the dropout rate, rate is still 50 50 in both the layers well i can have 25 percent rate as well in the second layer and the first layer can have 50 percent rate it all is trial and error really and when you do that you are ar addressing the problem of overfitting and why is that because uh, when you are dropping these neurons now your neuron cannot rely on one input as it might be dropped out at random for example i have this this particular neuron which is relying on one two three four neurons okay but if i drop these two at random now this neuron is not seeing the output from these two neurons 
so that way it doesn't create any bias you know sometimes if you have prominent feature your neurons might be biased with some specific features and you don't want that hence this technique works and neurons will also not learn redundant details of the input so now let's write python code build artificial neural network and see how dropout layer helps us we are going to use this particular data set which is basically a binary classification and it tells you whether sonar signals are bounced off metal cylinder or a roughly cylindrical rock if you download this data and if you open this csv file it has bunch of these features and in the end it has this value either r or m you see this is r this is m so you are you are just using all these numbers and classifying uh, it either in r which is a rock and m is a metal cylinder I have a Jupyter notebook where I have already downloaded that data and I'm going to provide the link of Ju this Jupyter notebook as well as CSV file in the video description below. And I loaded this data into a data frame. My data frame looks something like this. Now let's do some exploration for our data set. So first thing I always do is I try to identify the shape. So I have 208 rows, so it's not a very big data set. And then I want to know if any of the columns are containing null or not. And looks like they're not, they all have values. Also here, when I loaded this data frame, I used header is equal to none because this file doesn't have any header, you see? It doesn't have a column name. And when you specify header is none, it will just I use this integer sequence as column names. Now since I don't have to tackle the null values, let me just do some more exploration. I just want to print the column names. So column names are just a numeric range 0 to 59 and 60 is your target variable, which is your this particular column by the way. Okay, this is your target. And I want to analyze that column and see how many values do I have. So I have total 111 samples, which are metal cylinder and 97 uh, samples, which are rock. So it's a binary classification problem basically. So now I'm going to create my X and Y. And how do I create X? Well, from the data frame, drop the column 60 x is equal to 1 which is columns you can also say columns here columns okay and y is that and when you do your y y looks something like this and if you do x x it looks something like this it just doesn't have that 68th column so now that my x and I, y are kind of ready let me no, you know what? Actually, my Y is not ready because let's look at Y. See, Y has uh, text data R and M. So we need to do one hot encoding and convert it into integer number. Now, this is simple. It's just two labels. So what I can do is, you know, just use get dummies and then you drop the first dummy. You know, if you have two dummy columns, you can drop one and now it looks something like this which is i have this r column and one means it is a rock and zero means it's a metal so you need only one column uh, uh, here and that will be your target and when i do value count again here i find this so see uh, m is converted into zero r is converted into one all right now my X and Y are looking pretty good. So the next thing, as usual in machine learning, what you do is you divide your data into train and test data set. And I'm using a test size of 25%. I use random state for reproducibility. If you are running this again and again, if you specify random state, it will uh, divide it into sim similar type of splits, okay? So now my X train and Y train are 
kind of ready if you want to just you know check the shape So I have 156 train samples and 52 are taste samples. Now I'm going to import some Keras libraries and then build a artificial neural network. Now in my previous tutorials you have already seen how we build artificial neural network which is using Keras.sequential function. So here now you created this model and you can start specifying your layers so the first layer is uh, okay how many neurons you have in the input layer well 60 because uh, there are 60 columns total okay so I will create input layer like that so input layer is 60 and this is actually hidden layer because you know I have input layer as 60 and they are connecting to hidden layer which also has 60 neurons and for hidden layer the most popular activation function is ReLU after that I will create maybe two more hidden layers and see these neurons style and error friends I didn't come up with these numbers using some formula or something okay you just try it out and you'll know what is not trial and error is the last output layer this is output layer where I have only one neuron because it's a binary classification problem and I need to have just one neuron. And when I do model compile, I'm going to use the popular optimizer, which is Adam. Loss has to be binar binary cross entropy because it's a binary classification problem. And then I call model.fit to or train my neural network. So now here my batch size is eight. So you can see that I'm using a mini batch. Uh, I had a tutorial on stochastic gradient descent mini batch and the batch gradient descent. So you should watch it if you want to know what this batch size is doing. But in each iteration, I feed eight samples, calculate the error, and then do a backward propagation. Now you'll see that I achieved an accuracy of one. So I did this purposefully. I want to overfit this model. So now it looks too good, uh, but let's see how it does in, in terms of your taste model performance. So this, this is the accuracy by the way. So it got 78% prediction right. So it predicted 100 samples only 78 are right so it made a mistake with 22 samples okay I mean still still good not like very bad okay now here I'll just try to make some prediction and see how it goes so it's a sigmoid function so it will make a prediction between 0 to 1 and you need to uh, round it so when you round it you're converting that to whole number so it, this was the initial prediction and then I rounded it. So I get all of this. And when I do my Y test, I'm just trying to compare Y test with Y predicted. I'm going to go back from behind. So see, it was one, it predicted one. It was zero, predicted zero. It was one, predicted one. And then see here, zero, it predicted one. So it made some mistakes, but that's okay. Model looks overall good architecture wise. I can also print the classification report. We have already seen this before. Uh, this report prints to precision and recall, F1 score, and my F1 score is 79%. And you can see all the precision and recall numbers here. So now let's try a model with a dropout layer. So here I'm going to copy paste this code. And in this, I will introduce dropout layer. Okay, so the way you do that is by using Keras dropout layer. And what this will do is it will drop 50% of the neurons. If you want to drop 20% of the neuron, you can do this. The usual practice is to put a dropout layer after hidden layer. Okay, so I'm putting 
maybe three layers and you can you can have different dropout factor by the way uh, in uh, your different you know different layers and when I run this what I find is my accuracy for my training set is lower so it's training set accuracy at the end of 100 epoch is 85 percent here it was one so you can see that using dropout will reduce the accuracy on training set but that is okay you care more about test set test set here it was 78 percent here it is 80 percent so it's a little improvement but since it is dropping these neurons at random uh, you know you will get some variability but clearly the performance is improved i did one more run and found the accuracy to be 75 percent without dropout layer and when i use dropout layer the accuracy went up to 80 percent by the way i changed the variable name to model d here so make sure you do that otherwise you know if you have same variable name if you're jumping around in jupyter notebook sales it get it can get really confusing so make sure you don't get into that trap and I will print the uh, classification report now. So the classification report, classification report between Y test and Y pred. Okay. So I, I need to create my new Y pred here. So how do I do that? Well, I can just, I need to use model D by the way. I don't want to do all of this and I can just put all of this in one cell actually I need to do rounding because uh, the sigmoid predicts between 0 and 1 I need to convert to uh, 1 so you see 81% in precision and recall overall we care about F1 score so F1 score for both the classes is 83% 78% without dropout layer 78 71 percent so you can see clear improvement now if you run this code on your computer you might get a different result so don't complain that why you're getting different result because understand one thing here it is dropping the neurons random even when i run this 10 times i will see different result all the time okay so dropout is it's not like a sure short guaranteed way that you will see the improvement but you will likely see the improvement so it's all about trial and error and it's being used mostly in computer vision type of problems where your your neural networks are really big and complex you know where they have too many deep deep layer deep layers and too many neurons in each of these layers the one we tried was a very simple neural neural network and hence sometimes you might see you know the accuracy will be same or accuracy might go down with the dropout uh, dropout uh, layer uh, but that's that's okay all right so I hope you like this video uh, if you're enjoying this deep learning tutorial series so far please give my videos thumbs up share it with your friends on whatsapp Facebook and so on so that maximum people can benefit I'm putting a lot of time on this making these tutorials uh, so I want to make sure that if you have a friend or someone who is trying to learn deep learning they can also benefit I will see you in a next video thank you goodbye